Hey guys, welcome to another weekly portfolio update. Um, just in uh, Spotify chart here, um, just having a look at the recent price action in Spotify. So if you look here, the 13th of May, which is around when the market started moving upwards um, in terms of the more popular retail investor stocks, uh, Spotify has come up 40%. And what I find interesting about that is that it didn't really have the same crash that every other company did from like February down through like the rest until May. So it is down 28% there, but this it's kind of just this spike. So if you look at January, like from January, <coughs> they're only down like 1% roughly. Oh, 4%. But, um, yeah, they haven't had that same kind of volatility to the downside over this period. But then they're having the same volatility to the upside currently. Spotify is. Shopify, sorry. <clears throat> so, yeah, I think that's pretty interesting. Uh, it is a stock that I hold over here. Just up 34% now. I was... Uh, bouncing around at around break even for quite a long time it would always revert to about where I bought and then I'd buy more and yeah now it's significantly off where I bought so it's looking pretty good <coughs> um, so the only buy that I've made this week is Coinbase I bought $200 US more of Coinbase I didn't sell anything this week, and I don't intend to sell anything anytime soon. <coughs> so these are all my positions ac across the three brokerages, and uh, yeah, you can see a lot more are uh, going green, getting back into the positive. Um, I don't actually hold a position in Tesla, you can probably see, yeah, $39, that's not a position. Uh, so the only ones that are red are these four, Workhorse, Coinbase, Cirrus Logic, and Corsair Gaming. <coughs> uh, I've opened a few of them up here to have a look at. Yeah, Shopify doing really well. Tattered Chef, so Tattered Chef started moving 13th of May, had a really fast 37% up move, uh, but now has actually started coming back down down 11.7% so far um, just from from the 8th of June so a bit over a week ago um, yeah I thought that was interesting I don't really know what's going to happen I mean it's pretty much impossible to predict what stocks are going to do in the short term but um, yeah this is Tattooed Chef is my main position <coughs> in my whole portfolio uh, which I could in New Zealand dollars, eight thousand dollars in tattooed chef. I don't, don't have any other positions that even come close. I don't think. Uh, if we sort these by market value, yeah. So tattooed chef, and then next one down is Palantir at six thousand seven hundred. <coughs> so next one along is Corsair Gaming. Uh, so there was a huge movement in Corsair Gaming. It went from 31.30 to uh, 37... No, I think it got up to $41.40 or so in the uh, intraday here. Uh, where if you zoom out like this on a six-month graph, it doesn't look like that big of a movement. But uh, it really was a huge movement. It was about... 30% or so in a day, which obviously isn't shown on this graph, went significantly higher than that on the intraday, uh, but it only closed that day 11% in the green. So <clears throat> there was supposedly a bit of uh, Wall Street's bet talk uh, around the stock, but it seemed to fade out, didn't really seem to continue on like it has done with the other stocks that they've uh, started popularizing but yeah so it's come up and it's pretty much hit almost all the way back down to where it was 
Um, so yeah, so Corsair Gaming is back into what I would perceive to be a decent buy range. Um, and if it falls below probably $30, I'll be putting more money into my Hatch account and purchasing some more Corsair Gaming. Um, so this is an interesting thing that's been happening. Um, the US to NZ dollar, the US has been getting stronger since about the 31st of May. So you can see here it's up about 3.7% over that period. <coughs> you can see, you can kind of see it on the big graph. Uh, it's been trending down for ages, but it's starting to pick back up at the moment. And that has been making a significant impact on my uh, portfolio balance. For example, today we're down 0.33%. But if I look at what my balance was yesterday, like this number here, uh, this number is actually larger. So yesterday it said $58,321. And now it's saying 58723 So it's up about $400 since yesterday, despite the fact that it should be down at about $200. So there's a $600 discrepancy which is accounted for by this change in uh, conversion rate. So yeah, it's a pretty significant move actually, just like what it's doing to my portfolio. Uh, on a smaller scale, you don't really notice it that much, but like over a large portfolio, you kind of can see the effects that it's having. It feels pretty good at the moment, but when you consider I was putting money into my brokerages back when the exchange rate was much worse. It's, it, yeah, it's worked out well in the negative for me. <laughs> it's just slightly positive for me at the moment. <coughs> uh, yeah, this is my interactive brokers account. Not a lot going on here. $175 up, which is just under 10% up. Those are the two positions I hold there. Hatch account, doing fairly decently. I've only put 10,000 in this account, so around 60% up in this portfolio, in this account. <coughs> uh, you can see on the graph, it's doing pretty well. Not back where we were in February, up 107%. But yeah, it is, or at least this says a fake number, 72%, but we are up 60%, so. It's fairly close. <coughs> um, yeah, so Tattooed Chef doing really good, but also falling a little bit from where it's been in the past couple of weeks. Corsair Gaming's come back, uh, back down to that price that it was sitting at for a while of around $32. Dropbox is doing really well. They're just silent gainer. It's ticking up in the background. Workhorse has come a long way off of its lows. Uh, I was down about 80% or so, maybe even 85% for a while. And yeah, there was a few massive moves, like 27% days. <coughs> I think 27% was probably the biggest in a day, but they're up over 100% from highs, I mean, sorry, from lows. Um, yeah, and I'm only down 46% now, which is still huge. So I don't know why I said only. <laughs> Um, yeah, CCIV just sitting there around that same $23 as it has been for a little while. Uh, went down as low as about 18 recently after going as high as like 60 something dollars in February. So yeah, that's pretty insane. Um, over to my Sharesies account. Pretty much all the same positions as I said before, only Coinbase has been added to. Um, yeah, pretty much everything's done pretty well at the moment. Uh, I don't actually hold that position, 71 cents. I need to get rid of that. Actually, yeah, I'm definitely not going to um, buy Ideonomics. So let's just get rid of that. Sweet, so that'll be gone next week. 
Um, micro strategy is doing not too bad. Has been uh, significantly lower recently. Bought a little bit more in the dip there when it was down at 488. Went down to about 460, back up to 647. Fairly volatile stock. Palantir, it's a high conviction position. It's doing pretty well, back up to 25. Believe it went as low as about 17 or so. Yeah, I think the intraday was about in the 17s, like 1750 or something. Um, yeah, I have high conviction in the stock and I believe in where it's going over the future. Uh, as I was saying before, Shopify is doing real well, uh, up 34% for me now. Stitch Fix is heading back up. It was up uh, 200 and something percent, like 250 percent at the top of the spike, but yeah, it, uh, it was hit pretty heavily, moved a long way down, but now is starting to head back up, getting pretty close to 100 percent return on that again. But yeah, it's only a small position. I've only put in 600 US dollars because it was one of the earlier positions that I made when I was putting a lot less money into stocks back then. Uh, Virgin Galactic heading back up as well. Uh, since its lows of 1550, it's up over 100%. But yeah, since its highs, it's down still a lot. <laughs> but yeah, I managed to buy low, sell a little bit high. I didn't sell very much, I don't think. It's just a pretty small sell. Yeah, about 180 to 80 bucks, 170 dollars. Sorry. Um, yeah, still, it's done well. Uh, yeah, whole whole portfolio is doing real well. <coughs> this week ended up being 2,387 dollars in the positive. Uh, a lot of that would be contributed to the uh, or attributed to the exchange rate change. Um. Yeah, it moved quite a significant amount this week and yeah, I was noticing a lot of times when the market would be either down or not up significantly where my balance would be up significantly. So, I mean, it feels pretty good because <laughs> it's going up, but yeah, it's also something that could reverse. Um, I'm not 100% sure on the reason why it's happening, but I'm I have a idea that it's to do with the uh, what the Fed's doing with the monetary policy. They are bringing forward the interest rate hikes and uh, the easy money policies. So they've been buying up bonds and stuff, and uh, so they're bringing it forwards. They're doing it sooner, which is theoretically better for the inflation of the U.S. dollar. There should be less inflation of the U.S. dollar because they're bringing it forwards. Um, so that's at least the theory, my theory. I'm not 100% sure how correct that is at all, <laughs> but fairly sure that's why it's uh, the exchange rate's been changing at least this week. Um, yeah, and uh, <clears throat> I'm currently only $1,777 down from my all-time high. I'm sitting at eighteen thousand seven hundred and twenty three dollars profit in total with a portfolio cost basis of forty thousand so that includes everything like fee well all the purchase fees all the fees that i've already paid that includes all that but it doesn't include uh if i were to sell uh, i'd also have selling fees so if i were to sell my whole portfolio it wouldn't quite be this much but yeah the purchase fees and all that are all taken out of that because of the way I calculate it. I just calculate how much money I have transferred into the brokerages, which is 40000 and then I calculate the current value of the stocks that I own. So yeah, doing pretty well. Over $18,500 profit. Yeah. Um, one last thing I was going to mention. Uh, Michael Borry has been talking a lot recently about a market bubble. Um, yeah, he became famous from uh, the movie The Big Short, which basically 
goes into uh, something he did with his investment firm uh, around 2004, 2005. He started shorting the housing market or the banks or something because he predicted that the housing market was going to crash. Um, and this, uh, in the US, of course, uh, he ended up being very correct by about 2007, 2008. Uh, there was the big housing crash. So uh, he gained a lot of notoriety from that. It's the same if anyone picks anything and it happens very obviously, then <clears throat> they always look at who predicted it beforehand and they get a lot of notoriety. Uh, like any Tesla investors, if you find someone who invested in Tesla before it went crazy, you're just like, wow, you're amazing. Or any other, any other short, anyone who shorts anything right before it goes down, they're always like afterwards, they're always uh, get a very good reputation but it's just from one prediction and like a lot of the time that could be, just be luck um, <clears throat> not saying it was on his part but uh, being able to predict one thing doesn't necessarily mean being able to predict it in the future and the other thing about um, with market bubbles uh, if you look at like the tech bubble 1999 <coughs> um if you had have avoided the tech bubble because you looked at it and it looked like it was overvalued, then you would have missed out on heaps of gains in the stock market. Like, yes, you would have been uh, recovering for many, many years to get your portfolio back to where it was, but you would have missed out on all the gains. So I know it's a common thing that's referred to where market shorts will always be shorts and they'll always they always call out like oh there's a bubble over here there's a bubble over there um this is overvalued don't buy it and they'll never really tell you to buy anything so it's not necessarily good to listen to all these articles and stuff that come out like personally i'm not going to listen to that i don't think the market's going to the bubble is going to pop anytime soon or anything. Um, <clears throat> but I do I do uh, accept the possibility that it, there could be a crash anytime. So the market could start crashing tomorrow. And uh, so I have like steps uh, in a plan kind of where I, if the market falls like 10%, I'd be willing to put in so much. If it falls uh, 20%, I'd be willing to put in so much. And yeah so you gotta have cash on the sidelines for times like those or have a way to get cash so my way is that i would refinance my house i can add uh you know up to probably ninety thousand i could add up onto my mortgage i would not want to do that ninety thousand but i'd accept you know like another twenty thousand probably would be all right in terms of keeping the repayments manageable and with that money like i would only uh, if i set that as my maximum i'd only take that out if there was like a 40 percent crash in the market so i would take out twenty thousand if there was a 40 percent crash but then i also want to like stagger that amount so i'd want to say if there was a 20 percent and then i'd take out ten thousand or something like that and just have uh like steps along the way down where i put more money into the market because you can never be 100% certain where it's going, how low it's going to go. Uh, you can never know why it's going to happen. It seems like if you look like in history at crashes, it's always a new reason. There's always something that people weren't expecting. And people often refer to like, oh, this is the exact same as what this old crash looked like and the same things happening all over again. But if you look at all the big crashes throughout history, they never really repeat themselves the exact same way. Like, like the uh, the big crash where the, everyone wanted to withdraw their money from the banks and there wasn't enough uh, money at the banks. And then policy at the banks changed with, uh, the years after that so that they had to keep more money on standby in case things like that happened and people could feel more comfortable about their money in the bank. And then there was the housing crash where uh, there was way too much lending to people who couldn't afford the repayments. So 
everyone defaulted on their loans um, and then the policy changed in the years after that so it's pretty much impossible for the same crash to happen again not completely impossible but they the policy changes like people run the government for a reason like these people are here to change these policies if they realize there's a fault sometimes a crash happens to point out the fault but yeah the, the same thing shouldn't happen over again so same as cr uh, the recent crash uh, last year in March uh, no one could have expected it and we just have to be prepared as investors we have to be prepared for any kind of crash that could happen at any time have a plan set out so you're not panicking <clears throat> if your plan doesn't include selling don't sell <laughs> uh, my plan only includes selling if it's at all-time highs so if the market moves down off of all-time highs and there's no reason for me to sell my individual stocks like I still have high conviction in the companies I'm not gonna sell them so yeah if the market crashes hold me to that I'm not selling anything not at lows not off of all-time highs <laughs> anyway yeah that's pretty much all I got to say for today just remember that, as always this is not financial advice I'm not qualified in any way just adding my opinion into the mix uh, yeah have a great day leave a like comment and subscribe thank you for watching see ya